All right, everybody, welcome back to this week's EKG. Yeah, let's get started. So first thing I like to do is take a look at the forest and the trees of the forest are QRS complexes. So I'll start just looking at the rhythm strip down here and lead to, we'll see, we've got this narrow complex QRS that is very regular and it's absolutely tacking away. Find a QRS that lands on a solid line here. Let's count off that rate, 300, 150, probably around 200 beats per minute. Um, so the first things that come to my mind when I see a QRS that's moving that fast is um, likely not sinus, unless it's like an infant. Um, sinus node typically is unable to beat at 200 beats per minute in the typical uh, adult. And so given the clinical scenario, right, think about what is the capability of the sinus node? So I've got this narrow QRS. It's very regular. We need to make sure it's regular. So if you have a pair of calipers, you can measure out and see all these hard R intervals are the same. So it is regular. All right. So if it was irregular, we would our differential would be something different. We would have this regular narrow complex QRS. So what's the first thing that comes to my mind? Thinking. S V T supraventricular tachycardia. Why is it SVT? Why is it not VTAC? We've got these narrow QRSs. We know that narrow QRS means it's taking the Hisperkinji fibers, normal depolarization from the AV node down into the ventricle. So we know this is coming from the AV node or higher. That's an important distinction to make. So this is definitely not a ventricular arrhythmia. So we know that SVT is you know, it can be either AV reentry tachycardia, it could be AV nodal reentry tachycardia. And there's a couple of distinctions that um, we can, you know, use EKG for to help determine which one it is. So we know that AV reentry tachycardia is caused by some type of pre excitation syndrome. So what that means is AVRT, we'll look at our diagram here. Orthodromic AVRT occurs when, say, somebody has Wolf Parkinson White and they've got a accessory pathway right here that communicates between the atria and the ventricles. And you have a rhythm that comes from here, and we get atrial depolarization. AV node takes that, conducts it down to the Hisperkinji system, so we get an narrow QRS. What ends up happening is it retrogrades up through this accessory pathway, depolarizes the atria again, comes back down through the ventricles comes up, depolarizes the atria again, and that's how you get this reentry cycle of AVRT. Now, we are going to have P waves in AVRT, right? And those are going to be kind of these retrograde P waves, but the P waves are typically greater than 70 to 80 milliseconds after QRS. Okay, so that's a, a distinction of AVRT. And AV nodal reentry tachycardia, AV NRT, occurs when there's a reentry pathway in the AV node. And so you get this circuit that comes down this way and it sends signal down through his Purkinje fibers to create an error QRS. And then that signal comes back around the AV node and goes up and depolarizes retrograde through the atria. And so if I zoom in on my AV node here, Call that this is the AV node, say, and this cycle is occurring very quickly. And so these are retrograde P waves that occur typically less than 70 to 80 milliseconds after this ventricular depolarization. It'll come up and it'll go this way, and down, and back up. So this is occurring in rapid succession to each other. And so let's take a look at this EKG and see what we can think. Obviously, EKG is only so sensitive and specific to determine the difference, but I'm looking for retrograde P waves. So if I scan my limb leads here, I see some T waves, T's, T's. So T waves are typically nice and slopey. Atrial P waves are more sharp. 
So I can start to see these little shut deflections <clears throat> that are right after the QRS complexes. And if you keep scanning throughout, you can see V2 has a really nice sharp deflection right there, right there. And that is our retrograde P wave. And because that retrograde P wave is in such close proximity to that narrow QRS, we can say that that is due to likely a B no reentry tachycardia. Luckily, ABRT and ABRT treatments are very much the same. If they're unstable, shock, that's a synced shock. And if they're stable, we can give a denison to block that AV node so that we can regain sinus node function because the sinus node is being overridden during this time. So our sinus node is unable to drive this rhythm. So um, that's a, a good example of AV nodal and tachycardia. Um, hope that helps. Have a good day.